Cloud gaming is quickly becoming a viable alternative to traditional download and play gaming. Basically, a cloud gaming service allows you to connect your device over the internet to a remote PC gaming rig, on which you can run a wide selection of games, with the gameplay being streamed to you. Among the many advantages of cloud gaming is that the storage that would otherwise be needed for the game will be left free. You also don't have to own a powerful machine, and you can play games unsupported for your system. Oh, oh, oh. fuck! That's what I'm talking about. Thanks. There are currently a lot of different cloud gaming services, and choosing the right one can be difficult. There's GeForce Now, Xbox Cloud Gaming, Boostroid, Shadow Cloud Computing, Amazon Luna. I'm sure I'm forgetting one. I think, uh, oh yeah, and uh, Google Stadia, at least for a few more months. To help you get oriented, in this video, we'll compare our two favorite cloud gaming services, GeForce Now and Boosteroid. I am Roland, and I only have one question to ask. Are you with me? We will tell you what we like, what we dislike about them, comparing their pricing, subscription plans, requirements, performance, and gaming libraries to help you pick out the best one for you. Full disclosure on our side, for the sake of transparency, we are affiliated with Boostroid, but we still want to assure you that we're giving an honest and objective opinion on the two services. If you choose to go with Boostroid, however, we would greatly appreciate it if you use the link in the description, as it would help sustain the channel. Let's be honest, we all want the best service at the lowest price possible, and the two cloud gaming platforms we have for you today come very close to meeting this requirement. High quality, low prices. No questions asked. When comparing Boostroid to GeForce Now, NVIDIA's service is the only one that offers a free option, albeit limited. Its free subscription plan lets you play for free all the games you own, but only the ones that are in its library. Of course, there are several notable limitations with this plan. First, the maximum length per gaming session is one hour, after which you're thrown out of the game, right as you're about to score that sneaky headshot and win the victory royale in Fortnite. The other way the free version limits you is that it makes you wait in a queue before a rig frees up for you, which can be a while depending on the server and the time of day. The main subscription plan of the service is called Priority, and it extends the maximum gaming session length to 6 hours and allows you to turn on RTX. On your screen, you can see the difference in image quality with and without RTX ray tracing turned on. The priority plan also brings the time spent waiting in a queue to less than half a minute. This subscription plan costs you $9.99 a month for a single month subscription, or $49.99 if you subscribe for half a year, thus bringing the price down to $8.33. With both the free and priority plans, your streaming quality is capped at 1080p and 60 frames per second. GeForce Now also offers a premium plan, which lets you connect to the RTX 380 gaming rigs and streams in 4K with 60fps, or in 2K with 120fps. The plan costs $19.99 for a single month and about $100 for a 6-month subscription. An important note here is that to benefit from all the perks and visual candy provided by the RTX 3080 plan, you'll need a very good internet connection, something that we'll elaborate upon in the requirement section. With Boostroid, there's only one subscription tier, which is comparable to the priority plan of GeForce Now. The subscription costs €9.89 per month or $89.89 if you decide to pay for the entire year. With the yearly subscription, the price drops to €749 per month. For your money, Boostroid lets you stream with 1080p and 60 frames per second, and on some rigs, we were able to turn on RTX. However, it seems that not all Boostroid rigs support RTX at the moment, which will hopefully change in the near future. Additionally, there are no queues to connect to Boostroid servers. Also, Boostroid does not put any time limit on the gaming sessions. For comparison, even the highest tier plan of GeForce Now has an 8 hour limit per gaming session. The requirements to use either service are nearly identical. Both GeForce Now and Boostroid can be used on the potatoist of potato machines as they only need 4 gigs of RAM to function. The only real requirements for both platforms is your internet. It must have a speed of no less than 15 megabits per second and latency lower than 40 milliseconds. This is the bare minimum to use either service. Realistically though, you'll need at least another 10 megabits per second to get any serviceable gameplay. 
And if you want to use the RTX 3080 plane of GeForce Now, your internet will need to be even better, with a recommended speed of 40 megabits per second or more. Last but not least, both services recommend using either 5G wireless network or a cable internet to minimize latency. One of the most important aspects of any cloud gaming service is what games it lets you play. You see, you can only play games that are included in the library of a given cloud gaming platform. So if there's a specific game you want to play, better first make sure that you check if it's available there. GeForce Now currently boasts an impressive gaming library with over 1,000 games, including many highly popular titles such as Genshin Impact, Apex Legends, and Fortnite. While Boostroid's library is quite large, it features only half the number of games available on GeForce Now with a little over 500 titles. However, where Boostroid shines is that it supports almost all the latest AAA titles and the majority of the most popular multiplayer games. In addition to Genshin Impact and Fortnite, Boostroid also gives you access to Overwatch 2, Fall Guys, V Rising, God of War, Cyberpunk, Marvel Spider-Man, and many more. In our experience, GeForce Now has the larger library, while Boostroid seems to put more focus on bringing the hottest and latest games to its service as soon as possible. Ultimately, the availability of the games you want to play in either of those services will be the first determining factor when choosing which platform to use. Bear in mind that not every game is supported for every vendor across the two platforms. For instance, Boostroid may have the Steam version of a given game, while GeForce Now also gives access to the Epic Games release of the same game. That is why we recommend checking the list of games available in Boostroid and GeForce Now in the links below before deciding whether to commit to a service. One final note before we continue is that neither service lets you play for free games that are otherwise paid. With both platforms, you must either own a given game to play it or the game must be free to play. Before we tell you any specifics about the performance, you must know that there are a ton of other variables at play, such as the strength and type of internet connection, and the location of the nearest cloud gaming server. We try to run our tests with the two services under identical conditions to get the most objective result, but your experience may vastly vary from ours. We tested both services with the same list of games and the same internet connection. We also intentionally used a weaker internet to see how much it would affect our gameplay experience. Another note, when the internet connection is bad, both services will degrade the image quality to reduce the amount of transferred data and thus maintain a smoother gameplay. Finally, since GeForce Now has a dedicated client app that gives you access to settings that control your streaming quality, we tinkered with them a bit whenever we weren't satisfied with the current experience. What we found out was that there was a significant difference between the balanced and competitive settings. For most of the time, we used the balance as it gave us better image quality. However, when our internet was acting up, we'd use the competitive settings, which sacrificed resolution for performance. Boostroid doesn't give you such settings, but it also automatically downgrades the image quality to reduce the amount of transferred data, and thus maintains a smoother gameplay, like the competitive settings of GeForce Now. Starting with Metro Exodus, the game performed well on both platforms without any significant input lag or stuttering from the server's end, even when using the highest graphical settings and RTX features. What surprised us is that, even when we got lag spikes, the image quality didn't degrade too much with either service. However, as you'll soon see, this is not the case with every game we tested. After that, we wanted to chop off zombies' heads, so we launched Dying Light 2. And because we love seeing all the gory details of zombie parts flying around on a bright sunny day, we put everything on max in the graphics department, including RTX. With both Boostroid and GeForce Now, the performance was smooth, but we experienced quite a bit of pixelization caused by our bad internet. With GeForce Now, we tried the client's balance settings, which kept the image quality better but caused stuttering. Then, we switched to the competitive settings and the results were pixelated image during lag spikes, but smoother performance. The next game we tested was Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which was also played on the highest game settings. Here, once again, the two services provided equally good performance. We did experience some slight stuttering at the start of our gaming session with both of them, but it was alright afterwards. RTX also worked fine with both GeForce Now and Boostroid, without noticeably impacting performance for the most part. At one instance, the ray tracing did lead to an unusual drop in the frame rate in Boostroid, but we didn't encounter that issue again in subsequent sessions. Finally, we loaded Fortnite because we wanted to show off our formidable battle royale prowess by hiding in a bush for the entire game and waiting to get that sweet, sweet, sneaky sniper shot on the confused and beat up last remaining opponent. 
However, we found it a bit difficult to land that professionally executed headshot while our screen looked like this. For some reason, the least demanding game from the ones we tested seemed to require the most bandwidth, which our pathetic excuse for an internet connection was struggling to handle. Overall, the performance and image quality here was pretty much identical between Boostroid and the competitive settings of GeForce Now. However, where we did see a significant difference was how our game concluded with each service. With Boostroid, in spite of having heavy pixelization, we managed to get that victory royale. After an undisclosed number of attempts. With GeForce Now, apparently the service decided that our internet connection was too bad for any self-respecting gamer, and told us to go find a better one by throwing us out of the game, just as we were about to shoot another guy in the head. Let's summarize our findings from testing both cloud gaming platforms. Although GeForce Now may be the more polished platform, Boostroid is not to be underestimated. The two services have comparable pricing and performance, with GeForce Now being slightly more expensive and a bit more stable with certain games. On the other hand, Boostroid is less likely to throw you out of the game even when your internet is bad. During our test, there wasn't a single instance of us getting disconnected from the game using Boostroid, but we cannot say the same thing for GeForce Now. The other main difference between the two services is that GeForce Now has a larger gaming library, but Boostroid features a bigger number of AAA titles and popular multiplayer games. In conclusion, we'd say that both services are solid options for gaming, so the advice we'd give is to try each one for a month with the respective single month subscription plan, find out which platform works best for you, and then decide whether to commit for a longer period of time. As for which service to try first, that would depend on which games you want to play. Therefore, we once again remind you to take a look at the list of games from the links below. With this, our review and comparison of these two cloud gaming services concludes, and now we'd like to hear your thoughts about them. We are a new channel, and any advice on making it better is greatly appreciated. Please give us feedback through the comments or like and dislike buttons. Wisely done, Mr. Freeman. I will see you up ahead.